Welcome to Entreprogrammers Podcast, the podcast for developpreneurs, where you get to be a fly on the wall listening to real conversations of developers trying to tackle the challenges they face as entrepreneurs. This episode of the Entree Programmers is sponsored by GetDrip.com, email marketing and automation that doesn't suck. And believe me, I've been using Drip for a while now, and it's awesome. I never thought I would be somebody that liked marketing automation and things around it. But honestly, GetDrip has made this tremendously easy and enjoyable for me. I've sent more than 2,000 developers through my five-day email courses, for example. I've automated my entire mailing list through my WordPress blog. I've hooked up my Stripe account to send emails when somebody buys from me, and I've done so much more with it. And Drip's marketing automation features go so far beyond simple email list management. There are a ton of advanced features and marketing automation rules that you can use, a powerful API, and built-in integration with most of the top players in shopping carts and e-commerce. So if you're looking to do more than just manage your mailing list, and you really want to take advantage of a connected community through automated emails, rules, and other tools, you really need to get your Drip account started. So head over to getdrip.com slash programmers and get signed up today. Yes, oh, they're they're, 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 they're done a good job with their follow-up. I'm, yep. I'm actually considering um, doing that model for the the Dropbox integration with Signal Leaf. And yep. I'm about putting a, a landing page together yep. where you have to go to this landing page and request access to to it and then mm. send, send you an email about it and then give you an access code so you can... And sign up to get the feature and things like that. Nice little takeaway. Yeah. 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 And well, I love their emails. They send you yeah, these emails and they're like, look at this yeah. cool stuff you can do with Edgar. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. wow. This yeah. remind it, it they by saying those emails, they got me to remember Edgar enough so that it's become part of my routine. So now I'm stuck. It, it, which is something you could do yeah. with your 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 screencast too, something similar to that. But Yep. Well one other thing that occurs to me is that with the Edgar emails, I just signed up um and I'm getting it all set up now, but um, is that, you know, they have these references to Edgar. Well, he's a cephalopod, so when we say right. backbone, it kind of <laughs> takes it personally, right? right. And so with the backbone integration for Signal Leaf, I mean, you could do something like, you know, um, they, they have this uh, programmatic interface that you can use, but what they don't tell you is that you have to hire a Dropbox squirrel to go get the files. Right. And so, you know, and so you could have a little fun with that, you know. Uh, yeah. Ours is named Skippy, and so, you know, when you put yours in there, Skippy, he's excited to go get your file, and you know he can't he can't read the metadata, but we do that for him or something. I don't know. You know something that's not too cheesy, but it's kind of a little bit of personality to it. Right. I think yeah. this might be one of those write drunk, edit drunk type of scenarios. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Wait a minute, but but Derek can draw Skippy. Oh, I can. awesome! <laughs> I can. I can totally do that. Yeah. But but you know just something fun so that right. they yeah. Know, so it's. It's, hey, this is how it's going to happen. You know, Skippy's going to go get your file, and then he's going to take it to his friend who can read it, and yep. then, you know, that friend is going to do all the magic and blah, blah, blah. I don't know. Right. Yeah. Oh. We have slaves in the basement that Skippy brings <laughs> into. I don't know. That's, that's the dark option if you want to go that way. <laughs> Man, those Edgar people, they need to offer an affiliate program because I've got you all three of you oh, signed up now. <laughs> I know. I could be getting my Edgar for free. <laughs> Edgar Edgar's gonna definitely is definitely gonna make an appearance in my uh, in my Twitter course. So yeah, hopefully they'll get one soon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So but yeah, uh, Derek, you've got a ton of you've got a ton of you've you've got plenty of traffic here to work yeah. with for quite a while, and there's a lot of lo low hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. One one thing that I'm kind of wondering with what John was suggesting with the urgency thing is uh, could you email the list and just say, hey, you know, I offered this before, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to, you know, the, I'm, your offer is only valid for a few more days and create that urgency there. Do you need to warm the list up a little bit? I mean, is there an approach that you can do there to see if you can get some more of those people that have already oh, gone yeah. through the course to convert? Um, that's a good point. Yeah. Are, you, are these people question. getting content from you, Derek? Yeah, they roll into my normal mailing list after right. at the end of the the five day course. I would yeah put this landing page together and then yeah. this package and and hit them with it. Definitely. Especially if you know ones that the ones that have already signed up, which I think your your stuff is pretty clean. I think your uh, database is pretty well groomed. So yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, I, I totally couldn't send you it. a lollipop, so I put together this package for you. 
Yeah, do a mini sale for them and just send you know a couple of short emails for a couple of days. Might as well. You're going to get a bunch of people that will buy from there. And uh, yeah, I would I would also implement another quick win would be uh, do an email pitch to people who have uh, have quit uh, Watch Me Code. Like make it oh, yeah. so a month or two down the road or like, you know, every so often you send them an automated email that says, hey, you know, I know you subscribed to Watch Me Code in the past, but did you know we have all these new episodes and all of this stuff and now, you know, maybe it wasn't a good time for you and you had to cut expenses right. in the past, right? <laughs> um, but it's an investment in your career. Maybe you didn't realize, you know, and you could totally spin that thing and then, you know, change of circumstances, you know, maybe someone just got a new job. They're like, oh yeah, I forgot. I love Watch Me Code. I, I was sad when I had to cancel it. Now I'm going to sign back up. But um, but if you make that part of your sequence, that can have a you know you might get a very small percentage of people that come back. But but it's you know it'll be something, and it's you've got it. It doesn't take much effort. So right. Yeah. Well, and you can follow up on that with the kind of the jab 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 right hook from Gary Vaynerchuk. So it's so you send that email, and then it's you know hey, I still love you, you know, I didn't take it personally, so I'm going to give you this value, I, you know, I love you, I'm going to give you this value, you know, yep. um, I've been thinking about this, I'm, you know, here, here's a little... And the right hook is, okay, script. you know, you still suck. And then, and then you come back <laughs> around with the right hook and you say, you know, hey, if you weren't able to sign, you know, go back and re-register for Watch Me Code, you might just be interested in hooking up to Mong MongoDB, and so go check out the Mongo Mongoose package. Right. Perfect. You yep. know, and then, and then you come back around, you know, um, here are a couple of tips from the mongoose package you know, over the next three weeks that's just free value and then you come in and you go oh by the way I've put together this other package right and, and see if you can you know yeah because there are people who at some point you know trusted you enough to buy from you right. and it wouldn't be a stretch to think that they might do it again yep right all right, should we should we should we move on to uh, to uh, someone else's? Anybody else having having a made up crisis? <laughs> <laughs> Who else is so, in? So trouble? I have this friend. No, um, I I just want to ask, and this is probably going to get me a short answer, but um, I get emails from uh, Josh at three thirty in the morning oh, because he's no. in Eastern Time and I'm in um, Mountain Time. Yeah, but that's still five thirty in the morning Eastern Time, right? Yeah. So how in the heck do you get yourself out of bed at 5.30 in the morning? <laughs> because I, I'm I telling get, you, actually, I am addicted yeah. to my snooze button. I get up at 5.20 every morning. Okay, so you I double suck. How do you do it? Um, actually, are you, is this a serious question? <laughs> it's a serious question. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, well, so for one thing, I think your my emails are supposed to go out at 10 a.m. I think he means entre programmer emails. Yeah, like two oh. us. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sure. okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, so I have been a um, I have been a lifelong night owl actually, and Guilty. so couple, yeah, like a couple years ago when I was working on my book, I think this was, yeah, this was about two years ago. Um, I was working on one of my books and I could only work on it in the morning, like I, because we had kids at that point and. I used to be able to work in the evening, and I'd work like you know from like eight or nine. My wife would kind of go to bed at like around nine or ten. I'd work until like twelve or one sometimes, mm -hmm. and uh, get up at like seven or eight, you know. Um, but once we had kids, like I couldn't do that anymore because they were we'd put them to bed, and then you know that kind of like the whole that was kind of like the evening. Yep. Um, so yeah, I just so what I did was I actually trained myself to get up with my alarm not get up at a specific time. And that, that seems like a silly distinction, but it actually was huge for me because um, now, like, when my alarm goes off, there's no resistance for me just getting out of bed. Whether it's, like, whether it's 5, 5, 20 in the morning or, you know, I sleep into, like, 6.30 or 7, um, when my alarm goes off, I don't even think about it anymore. Yeah. So I made it a habit. So what I did was I actually started, I just set my alarm for the time when I would normally get up, mm -hmm. and I didn't let myself snooze it. So I was getting up at 7.30, so I set my alarm for 7.30, and I just got up with my alarm as soon as it went off. And I did that for a couple weeks, and then I started walking it back like 15 minutes at a time until I was all the way back to like you know 5.15 or 5, 5.30. And that for me that worked really really well. I, I tried a bunch of times. I'd never been able to do it, 
and that that's been the only thing that's worked for me. So so, so basically, it's a, I set my alarm, and then well, I can't snooze because I have to get up anyway. Yeah, exactly. And then, yeah, and, and then it's okay. Well, I'm not going to snooze because it's only going to get me ten minutes. Well, I used to snooze. I used to snooze like six times, <laughs> five or six times. Um, I'm I'm lucky that my roommates in college didn't smother me with my pillow because I was really <laughs> inconsiderate. Um, and it, they made like little comments once in a while, um, but they were passive aggressive comments. But um, yeah, so I I think on my phone I was able to disable the snooze alarm completely. So it was like I basically just you know there was no not an easy way to delay it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. So. All right. That that was what worked for me. I got that. I think I got that from. I I actually did some research. Um, such a nerd. But like I was like <laughs> doing. How do I get up earlier? And um, I found an article that basically suggested that. It was right around the time I was like kind of reading some of B.J. Fogg stuff, the Tiny Habits, um, where he talks about. You know, if you want to, if if you want to learn how to floss, if you, or if you want to get in the habit of flossing, floss one tooth. You know, if you want to get in shape, do one push-up every day. So easy that you can't possibly not do it. And then do that for three weeks, and then up the difficulty a little bit. You know, and kind of e- and ease yourself into it. Because it just remembering to do it takes a lot of focus. Right. Yeah. I just fixed my alarm, so we'll see how that works. Give it a try. Yeah. We can give you wake up calls if you want. You're like, get your get out of bed, you lazy. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, right? Because it's like seven, baby. seven thirty in the morning for you. Yeah. <laughs> I I need to start getting up early again. I was so good at I used to wake up at like four thirty or five, hit the gym and but since I've had uh since since we've had my daughter and since I've now, you know, working for myself, I just I haven't set an alarm in like over over a year and a half or so. I just wake up I, it's guaranteed that it'll be woken up by by eight. So <laughs> by I, 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 need, I will be woken up sometime before six a.m. because of my kids. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, but I'm need, getting later and later starts to the day, which I mean, well, eight a.m. is not a, a really late start, but it's. It, I would like to start my days much earlier because you get yeah. more stuff done in the morning and you don't feel like your day's wasted by the time you get back from the gym. You know, so right. Yeah, I actually kind of like would like to. I think I actually <laughs> someday I'd like to move more towards what you're doing, John, because I have a really hard time sleeping. Um, and I've talked about before how useless I am on short sleep. Yeah. And like it's really tough. Like for me, if I'm doing anything at all between like six and eight p.m. and I'm talking like the other day I took down the Christmas tree, that was enough that I was like supercharged. I mean, like I was so energized by that. That I basically I have to start my shutdown routine at like six o'clock, and I have to like not do anything. I have to not use my computer, not use my iPad, and it's yeah. just really really difficult. You know, I don't I can't do any chores. <laughs> it's like it's really really restrictive for me to be able to get to sleep by like ten o'clock. It's it's been really frustrating. So I don't I don't know. Hopefully I'll figure it out at some point. Yeah. It's it's I'm it's weird that every single productive person in the world has ADHD it's just <laughs> I, I do not like it's so weird now like that's I don't know but yeah. that's a different discussion it's like you cannot be successful unless you have this apparently but <laughs> yeah but, but I did have a problem for a while where drip was sending my emails out really early in the morning so I thought that's what Chuck yeah. was referring to nope but, Drip fix two implement two features for me, like or they've got one. They did one like in I asked for an API change, and they made it so that I could um I, I could identify someone. I could figure out if someone was already subscribed, so that like it, which it's pretty cool because now I'd have this problem where people would have a different PayPal email address than their regular email address. So when they'd buy my product with uh with with their PayPal email address, it would subscribe that email address, and I wouldn't track the conversion. But they added a, a cool thing that let me do that. So that was like in a day, just to go off a tangent. For <laughs> yeah. And then the uh, the the manager subscriptions link for the footers. Yes, I love yeah, that. I, I talked with them. Remember three or four weeks ago, Josh? You you told us all about um, how they changed yep. the subscribe link. Yeah. Well, I I had honestly was confused by what you were talking about, and then like a week later, I had somebody email me 
and complain about having unsubscribed from my list and panicked and emailed Drip and said, what's going on? And they told me the exact same thing that you did. And I was like, oh, okay, now this suddenly makes sense. All right, well, if you guys are going to make that change, can you at least give me an un give me yes. a manage subscriptions link? Yep. And so they're like, yeah, cool, we'll do that. Yep. The way they have it now is perfect. That's how it should be. Like yep. you yep. give them two options. Right. Unsubscribe from everything because you hate me, or just get rid of this one email that you don't yep. like. Yeah. Yep. In fact, and I've I've worded my thing so now it's you know unsubscribe <laughs> just this email series manage subscriptions, and I put up if you want to give up completely. <laughs> okay. I, I read something, I don't remember where I read it, but it was talking about using the words give up or like people don't like to give up. And so <laughs> yeah, um, you can have a higher kind of, uh, oh, maybe it was from the Bacon Biz uh, like a conference that, that I heard one okay. of them talking. But yeah, so telling nice. people not to give up or, or implying that they're going to give up is a good way to <laughs> prevent them from doing it. So, so we've learned that uh, John plays mind games to keep people from unsubscribing. Mm -hmm. Eric can't understand what John says in email, and that we are actually Drip's uh, feature design team. Yes, <laughs> we are. Nice. Anyway, anyone, you answered my question. Anyone else have something? I've got a bunch of things to report. Yeah, uh, I'm. I'm probably going to have to give up on Edgar. I love it. It's freaking amazing, and I've had a tremendous amount of engagement from it in the two days that I've been using it, but I can't spend 50 bucks a month. Just, I mean, don't do it for now. You can always come back yeah. to it. Yep. You can always come back to it. Like, I feel bad, though, because I, I reached out to them just yes, two days ago asking them if they could, if they could sponsor our podcast, and <laughs> now I'm going to go cancel my account, and it's going to look well, really bad. Well, here's oh, what they should do. What Listen, a they jerk. Should, they should sponsor the podcast. Seriously, give how, us how much all free about? and give us free access so we oh, can continue. Oh, that would to be awesome. <laughs> It doesn't cost you. It it costs money to sponsor the podcast, but it doesn't cost anything to give free free access. That's so true. that's my that's my proposal. Right. If they're if they're this, being, this is an interesting psychological principle though too. It's like you've engaged with them, right? right. So you've had you you have a little more commitment. And you feel you at least feel guilty, like you're still going to cancel, but you feel a lot of guilt about yeah. it. Yeah. And I've definitely like. There have been times when I've looked at my newsletter subscription and I'm like, I'm paying Ben Settle 97 bucks a month. That's a lot of money. And then like I go to, un I'm, I'm like, the dude has answered so many questions for me, you know, and engaged engaged me. It's like I can't do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. So well, I'm I'm actually waiting to to hear back from Edgar on how long their trial period is. It's 30 Cause days. 30 days, because yeah. I I thought I saw 60 days when I signed up, but. And then I had a discount code to give me a free month, and I don't remember. So I, I don't know if it's 30 days, 60, or 90 at this point. So I'm trying Just to email their support and tell them that. I thought I, I saw did. 60 days I, somewhere. I, I oh, and I got exactly this. That. I, said, I said exactly that. And, <laughs> and most, they, most haven't, them, yeah. they haven't re replied yet. I'm waiting for them to, to tell me when my trial period is up. Because I don't want to cancel until I absolutely have to, and I, I hope that I don't have yeah. to because I really like it. Yeah. Well, you definitely like I. You definitely need some kind of tool. I think if right. you're going to do the tweet adder thing, just to keep. Actually, tweet adder can do bulk scheduling if you really, if you really just. Yeah. You know, the just, Twitter website can do scheduling. You can just go to ads.twitter.com and schedule tweets manually all day long. The problem with doing yeah. that is, you you Funky. it's one tweet at a time. Yep. I mean, literally, you, you, if you want to send out 100 tweets over the next 100 days, you got to enter 100 tweets. The, yeah. Free free version of Buffer does it. It, yeah. And it'll do it on Twitter all. I mean, you can just, just like, do ten at a time or something. But yeah. you just you know right. have some more. You know, do it every couple of days, every three days. So yeah, I don't know. yeah, yeah. Fifty bucks a month is. I, I if I was in your shoes, that would be a big. That would be a tough one yeah. to swallow for me too. Yeah. I have to say though that the other thing about Edgar that really got me is that I engage people through not just my. Twitter account, but through all of the show's Twitter accounts, right. mm. and so I have about eight or nine Twitter accounts that I'm engaging yeah. with people on a regular basis, and so the fact that I can select which um, scheduled stuff goes yep. out to which channel mm -hmm. yep. and, and stuff like that, yeah. and that, that's a killer feature for me, so yeah. I, can, Same here. I can yeah, line up, okay, you know, this is all the Angular-related stuff, so this will go to Adventures in Angular, and this is all the Ruby-related stuff. But this is general-purpose programming stuff, so this can go to everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's cool. So, 
Nice. Let's see. So um, the things, what did I have? Oh, so, the, so one of the big things to report that I have is that my book, Soft Skills, was number one in UK for like, it didn't last very long, but it was like, there was like this five or six hour, hour period where it was number one across all of the like technical, um, which was pretty dang cool. Yeah, it is. That's um, awesome. You're going to be disappointed cool. the book isn't plush. Yes. I mean, like soft skills. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, awesome. Uh, yeah, that was pretty cool. Now it's it's kind of hanging out. I'm dev I'm 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 devoting my time to promoting the book, basically at this point. Like it's, I've got tons of ideas and stuff. Um, I've been talking on lots of podcasts. Donet Rocks just came out yesterday, um, basically about soft skills. So that was a cool, uh, big win. Um, I've done like all kinds of stuff. I'm looking at hiring a book PR person to do uh, to actually do PR for the book to land bigger like media outlets um, I've I've been interviewing some of them and I, I think I'm probably gonna go with it um, I've got a couple of big deals in the work to, to kind of get the the promotion of it my I'm, I'm going to get this book to number one as a technical book like it's going to I don't know if it'll stay there but I am going to to do that on Amazon like this is my I, I'm I'm set on this goal so and I, and I think I can do it but um, yeah, and then the email course has been doing just uh, awesome. Like I already shared kind of the details of that, but the mm -hmm. engagement is just ridiculous. And uh, and with the Bluehost affiliate, if I can, I mean, if if it it looks like it should it should keep up, but if I can pull in like two grand a month on the Bluehost affiliate alone and sell like three to five thousand of the course, that's a pretty dang good pull from an email course. That's like right. insane. Um, so um, I've got the funnel guy coming on Sunday to go through the funnel thing with me. Um, I actually did a Skype with Patrick McKenzie, um, the uh, Kalamazoo, the bingo card creator guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, it, he just offered like to, I, I saw one of his, his, his uh, talks and he offered to just reach out and he'll like review your stuff. So he went over all my uh, dev career boost stuff and he, he really, he, in the email course and he was like, Oh yeah, you're doing exactly how I would recommend. Like he had a few minor things, but he's like, yeah, this is, this is good. So, um, with that feedback and then the one from, uh, from the copy hacker, I, I'm feeling really good about the, about the direction this is going. I mean, there's still work. I still have to fix things, but, uh, but yeah, it's been, been going, going pretty good along those, those lines. And, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much what, what I've been doing. I'll be, I'll be really interested to see what happens with your funnel day because I'm guessing that guy's going to come from more of a hard sales perspective versus yeah. like, you know, we're a little bit more in the kind of educational uh, side of the marketing approach. So it'll be interesting just to see, just to see what he comes, you know, what his, what his recommendations are. Yeah. Hopefully it'll be worth it. It's, it's a little bit expensive. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but uh, yeah, Chuck is making a comment about funnel cake. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck's I should his, just out say, uh, come out and say it, right? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it, it, I don't know. I think it'll be worth it. I think it's a good investment. I also invested in going to MicroConf, and uh, I'm going to be going to the Plural Site Authors Summit. So I've got like kind of all these. I, I may I may do for this year because I haven't really planned out this year. I may spend this entire year not producing new products, but just um, working on my funnel, working on promoting the mm -hmm. book, and just maximizing what I already have. Because I have a lot out there that's, that has potential, and I feel like if I can get a good engine, a really good system in place with the funnels, could start getting paid advertising in place, and, and, and get this book promoted, then that's going to be, um, be huge. Um, oh, yeah. oh, the other thing I did with the book, this is awesome. I'm so excited about this. <laughs> So thanks, Josh, for the help on this. I had to pick Josh's brain yesterday. But um, so so when I talked to uh, Patrick McKenzie, he said, "Oh, you know, one thing that I would have recommended with your book is if you could put a page in at the front that says, hey, go to this email, you go to this link and sign up for email address. You'll get bonus content uh, from the book, and you know, you get them on your mailing list and and stuff." And I said, "Ah, I I actually just had that idea two weeks ago, and I sent it to the to um to the entre programmers list." And then I was like, dang, I wish I could have, I would have done that. Um, maybe I can get them to, to do that in the digital version of the book. Um, but I remembered that uh, I had done a smart thing and I had made all of the links in the book essentially pretty links. 
So all the links, like it, when I talk about something in the book or, and have a link, it goes to simpleprogrammer.com slash, you know, whatever it is, like lean, lean startup or whatever. Um, and so I realized that I could take all my pretty links and I could make them all point to a landing page that says, hey, sign up here to get bonus content from the, the book. And then, and then after they sign up or if they say no thanks, send them to their page. So I built this little thing in Optimize Press and put some JavaScript in there to um, to interact with the Drip API directly, and then to check to see, you know, uh, to, to to grab the URL from the, uh, you know, from from the query string. And so I changed all my pretty links now. So anytime anyone clicks on anything in the book or types in one of those pretty links, it's going to take them to this landing page which will sign them up for a new drip course, which immediately when they sign up, they get a bonus chapter for the book, which, um, so they get that immediate value that they can download. And then it's going to put them on this, this drip sequence, which I haven't finished the drip sequence, but it's going to basically give them a whole bunch of cool bonus content for the book to give them a whole bunch of value and engage them. But it's going to ask them to do things like, Hey, could you, um, could you tweet out the book? Could you share the book? Like give them those reminders along the way. And then towards the end of it, when I think they finished reading the book, I'm going to say, can you go to Amazon please and review the book in, you know, in, in, so, so I'm going to have, uh, not only am I going to grab a whole bunch of people that are going to come onto my list, but I'm going to put them through this, uh, this course, get them to be super fans and, and get them to engage and share and review the book, which is, uh, I, I think this is good. I think it'll work well, but one other thing, one other thing about that, um, one thing you can do with this, the drip course, the follow up course is continue to drive them back to the book. Yeah. So have a bunch, you know, a bunch of your emails should just be like, take kind of the biggest points from the book, and condense them down into one email, and say, you know, and then you can go, you can read more about this in chapter X. Yeah, just to make so, sure they follow through with reading the book. And, yeah, yeah, or even if they didn't, that they're still going to get some, you know, because like I have a stack of books that I bought that I haven't read yet, you know, and yeah. so if you can give them a lot of the value of the book without them ever reading it, then oh, they I will see. do that. You know, so pull out some of the best stuff and drip it out to them, just so that they are sure, you're sure that they get it. Yep. Yeah, that's a good idea. I I also realize that there's a whole product around this. I mean, I don't have the time to create it now, but essentially, you know, um, you could you could package this whole thing up as a well. There's there's a software involved with creating a because there's no welcome gate landing page um, software that exists right now. Because I looked out there to see is there is there a way um, to do this already, and there's not. So so essentially, you know, I could build a WordPress plugin or a simple thing that did this so that your pretty link goes there as, as a gateway, and it could apply to. But but the bigger picture of this would be to create this whole package like for targeting book authors and saying this is how you make your you know you get your 10% royalty on the book but it could be worth a lot more than that every copy you sell the book because you can grow your mailing list you can sell other things like you can get engagement and this is a whole mm -hmm. system this teaches you how to do it you put the links throughout your book and then it's got software that you you install this on your WordPress blog and then it'll capture the leads and send them on to their link like that that whole thing you could probably sell for you know 500 bucks, a thousand bucks, uh, to authors who are publishing uh, books. Sounds like your next product. <laughs> I, I don't have the audience though. That the only problem with creating right. that is I don't have the audience. Now, yeah. Josh, you might end up having the audience. <laughs> well, you, yeah, or you could, you know, if you did create that, you could go to people who did have the audience and do webinars and stuff like that to to build it. The other thing is is um, you know, um, Derek has connections to Prague Prague. And yep. So you may be able to get them to do it for all of their books. Because right. all of their ebooks, they release new versions regularly. Right. And, you know, and then, then they can work something out with their authors so that they share the list. Yeah. And outdated links in books are like, I've heard from multiple authors, are like one of the biggest complaints that you get from readers. Yeah. yeah. So having like, having e solving that problem. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It solves that problem. It allows you to monetize the links because you don't want to put Amazon, uh, you know, 
associate links, you know, in inside the book, especially the printed <laughs> version. It's like, I always <laughs> type. I always type that. that I, you know, ID dash twenty or whatever. Did you guys see that um, <laughs> that tweet that's going around recently about the uh, printed job application? Oh yeah. This is like you, you know. Here, here's a job ad, and to to start your application, go to this URL, and, and it's like a thousand character long garbage <laughs> string, with all the junk in it. It's just, I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Nice. We're gonna we're gonna put those kinds of links inside of our printed books and make it totally like every one of those characters. <laughs> percentage two zero colon percentage two one ampersand. Per, wait, what? <laughs> but, yeah, uh, the younger readers though they're gonna be like, I'm I'm tapping the link and it's not doing right. anything. It's not right, doing exactly. Anything. <laughs> this book is broken. <laughs> But yeah, it's um, we'll see. I mean, I, I think this is this is going to be really big for engagement in the book nice. and just making the book. You know, selling the book is worth a lot more than selling the than the royalty that I get from yes. the book at this point. Yes. Right. Um, and so uh, yeah, so so we'll see. I mean, and it'll be another steady stream of people because as the book sales continue, then it's like a it's like a, a free advertising that will will pull people onto the list. And uh, yeah, so. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how it how it works out. But yeah, that it was it was so cool when that clicked because I was talking to my wife and I was like, oh yeah, that other guy mentioned the same thing. I wish I would have you know I came up with the idea too late. And she and she was actually the one. She was like, well, didn't you make it so all the links in your book point to somewhere or something? And I was like, <laughs> you're a genius. You're a genius. <laughs> so I ran to my desk and I started implementing it immediately, or like trying to figure out how to figure out how to get that going, but. Probably the last time she'll yeah. ever give you an idea. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ruin date about, night. How about you, Josh? What's going on in the oh, Josh world? Not a whole lot. So I um, I've been I've been uh, just writing emails, and uh, the one thing I two things I did this week was um, I'm deciding to get starting to get serious about because I had um last weekend I had. Uh, I landed a client for copywriting client, um, which actually ended up getting delayed. So I'm not sure now if it's going to fall through or not. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm realizing I need to start to get a little bit more disciplined about how I'm thinking about the consulting side of things that I'm doing. And so I, um, I'm, I'm starting to put put people that I contact into uh, CRM. So I got I'm, right now I'm using Zoho, which I like. Um, so it's free. Um, and so I'll probably, you know, I might try a couple other ones. If if you guys have one that you like, I would love a rec like love recommendations. Um, but it's just mainly I'm using it as a way to remind myself to stay in touch with people. So I have oh. like this chiropractor that I was con had contacted last fall. We had a really good email exchange, and he seemed to like me and stuff. But he ended up he wanted to do Facebook ads, which I'm not going to do. Um, so you know, I kind of I haven't really contacted him since, but. I threw him into Zoho and set myself for a three-month reminder. So I'm just going to ping him every three months, and for now it'll just be automated or it'll just be manual. You know, I'll just go in. I'll, if I can get like a few hundred people, and I'm doing, you know, every week I contact a few people and you know personally contact them, I think that's going to over time that'll be all I really need. I don't yep. think you need a very big, you know, when somebody's willing to write you a check for three grand, I don't think you need a very big list to make that. To make that work, and these are warm people that I've already, you know, they already know me. Mm -hmm. You're so, doing exactly what success, successful real estate agents do. So, well, I've been trying to get my real estate client to do this, and he won't. What? <laughs> so this, this is just what real estate agents do. Yeah, this they, is what I've been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. So, um, but yeah, so I'm gonna. I'm, I don't know. Like, I think long term, what my my client acquisition strategy is probably going to be a revolve around LinkedIn. Um, because I think I can get on there. You can get people's email addresses from LinkedIn, yes. which I like a lot. Yep. So, um, you know, I can get people. I can engage them there, pull them into my CRM, and then talk to them, and then maybe, maybe put them into a drip sequence. It looks like Zoho actually has. So, if you use Zapier, you can actually integrate it with Drip. So I can add somebody into Zoho. They'll get added, you know, later on when I have a drip campaign set up. They would get audit, added automatically, and then vice versa. If somebody signs up on Drip for something that I'm offering, you can have them pulled in as a contact. Nice. So that's pretty powerful, and then I can also like add people directly from inside Gmail. 
so I can add new contacts and stuff. So it seems it seems like it'll do what I need it to do. Um, the other thing I've been working on is getting everything ported over to Google Apps. So that has been <laughs> that has been kind of painful, but I'm I'm pretty happy about it. So it'll be Josh at joshearl.com instead of or joshuaearl.com instead of my crazy long Gmail address. Um, I've learned that, so apparently Google Apps has like this delay. So you turn on a feature when you're the admin, and then there's like this delay where it looks like things aren't working. It just has to propagate to your account. So like today I had I had the crazy old old style chat turned on, and I enabled the new chat features and stuff, and then like, why isn't it working? And like two hours later, it just magically starts working. It, it's Skippy. Mm-hmm. It's Skippy. <laughs> the squirrel. He, he has to, to manually. He has to go and run over there. Like you change the, the feature, then he has to like, uh, you know, and he's got. Oh to man! Did I like create an ultra programmer's meme here? Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> he's got to switch out some Ethernet cables. And... Yes, that's right. So, Somebody yeah, hired that guy to to handle DNS changes years ago, and I've been hating him ever since. <laughs> <laughs> I, I used um, to you heard Josh's that, uh, email here. He needs drugs from Canada. <laughs> when uh, when I used to work for HP, uh, we used to have these really slow printers and like these thousands <laughs> That's of dollars. Kind of ironic, isn't it? Cause... Yeah, well, they're, they're MFPs. They're huge printers, right? So they were super slow for the first page printing. So I used to always joke that that you know, and they're huge printers, and there's like panels in them. I used to joke that what is what the way the printer actually works is they they've hired this little Indian guy, and he sits in there, and then he he draws what whatever it is. That's why it takes so long. You say MFPs like mother effing printers. <laughs> ones. Anyway, sorry. Um, so uh, I want to I want to go back to something that Josh was talking about there for a second, because um, you're talking about you know finding people, putting them into your funnel or you know your workflow or whatever. Right. But I'm I I have to push a little bit and ask if there's some way to either create a community or find a community that you can serve, because yeah. it seems like you could really get something to take off. If you can find people that just yes. have, no, to, have to have to have what you do, you're totally right. And I, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I need to do that. I need to pick a specialty at some point, um, which I don't have right now. And I'm kind of like just delaying that because there's, there's a bunch. There's, I'm getting a lot of experience through this copywriting internship. So mm-hmm. one of these audiences that I'm learning about might be one that I end up sticking with okay. long term. Yeah. Or, you know, there's some other, like, I've got some inroads now with the bootstrapping community and stuff. So I could, you know, I could I could become, like, the, you know, the, the email, I'll write emails for your, for your bootstrapped, um, you know, for your bootstrapped company or something like that. I just don't know yet. There's, like, a lot of ways I could go with it. But for now, what I'm doing is just capturing the people that I am talking to and making sure that I don't lose touch with them. That makes sense. Yeah, I can, I can, yeah, that makes sense. I can just say that, it's going to be a whole lot easier to focus your marketing if you know who you're going after. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I agree 100%. So, so yeah, I have to I have to pick I think I need to pick a I need to pick a service. I for right now like I'm kind of just experimenting like I'm I'm you know, I'm getting comfortable talking to people on the phone and selling my services over the phone over Skype mm-hmm. and stuff, which is a, you know, a whole skill set that I've never done before and is very nerve-wracking, but um, you know, so I kind of like there's some pe- yeah there's some pieces I need to have, just some skills that I'm developing now, and then later I need at some point I need to pick an audience, yep. in order to make this thing actually go. So, yep. but my my uh, my 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 mentor just contacted me on Skype yesterday. He's like, you want a whole bunch more work? <laughs> I was like, no, <laughs> but I was like, bring it on, you know. <laughs> yeah. So of course I do. Of course I do. Yeah, he's got so he's got another client, um, which he had told me he was going to be dropping clients. So I don't know what this means, but we're going to talk on Tuesday. And he's like, you know, I've got a whole bunch of stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm actually, he's like, I'm gearing up, and I want you to be a part of it. So we'll see. We'll see what he has in mind here. I'm kind of hoping he starts paying me a little bit more money. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, I mean, this is one of the key things that I think most people get wrong is always when given a choice between more money or more responsibility, always pick more responsibility. Like you yeah. cannot go wrong doing that, which is what you're doing because it, money will always follow that. Like yeah. mm-hmm. it, it'll always be better, a better choice to pick more responsibility. So I mean, that, you're you're making the right choice. It's it's people yeah. always pick the wrong choice of that, and they always pick more money, yeah. and it 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 does. It, it's a short-term win, 
but the more responsibility is a much better longer term win by doing this by taking on more of his stuff like your the reward will come eventually yeah. you will either he will pay you more or you'll become his right hand man and he'll you know you'll you'll be almost partners in the business or you will learn so much that you'll be able to duplicate it and go out and do it on your own and bill exactly what yeah. he's billing so Yep. Yeah, I have. I mean, yeah. Just last weekend, I I got somebody to say yes on a three thousand dollar contract to basically write, you know, a postcard and a short white paper. So that's pretty, you know, that's that's pretty big. Like I think my skills are getting there to where I can, I'll be able to bill a decent amount for this stuff. So. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's. I'm just gonna have to gut it out for <laughs> gut it out for a while. It kind of goes, John. What you're saying kind of goes back to that. Uh, so good they can't they can't ignore you book and the the idea of the career capital. Like you have to, yep. You have to build that. Like if if it, overreaching, like if you go for too much money or too much freedom before you've built up the capital for it, then it's gonna it's gonna fall apart on you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's exactly and, it. Yeah. So yeah, that's pretty much. I have another long weekend ahead writing emails. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. It's fun though. I'm. I'm. One thing I will say this. So one thing I've really, really has I've learned in the last few weeks is, <clears throat> so when I I'll, I'll get these assignments like he'll be like contacting me on Friday. He'll be like, I need you to write ten emails, and I'm like, when do they do? Like Monday. Okay. <laughs> when I already had like two assignments from him that weekend. Yeah. Um, so, but what I'm realizing is like my my tempta the temptation is to just panic and jump right into the email writing. But what I have to do is spend like an hour or two sharpening the saw and like yep. getting back into the audience and just reading and like it feels like wasting time because it's kind of fun. Feels like I'm just procrastinating. But if I can just if I can just dive back in, read some blog posts, like dig through the comments, look at what the, the pain that people are going through, like the ideas come because for me actually the the it takes me like an hour to write an email. And most of the time is like, f you know, figuring out what the heck I'm going to say. And so if I can short circuit that a little bit, it's been really cutting down my time. Like I, when I know what I want to say, I can write the thing in like 20 minutes. Yeah. It's not hard. It's just, it's just coming and figuring out the angle. Like where am I going to start? The two hardest parts are where am I going to start? Where am I going to end? Like how do I start it and how do I end it? And the subject line. And yeah. the hard thing about these 10 email sequences, I'm doing all those things 10 times. <laughs> versus just like a blog post or something. It's just like, you know, you only have to start the thing once. But, yeah, so fun stuff. If you ever get tired of writing your sequences, you can write mine. <laughs> I I would love to. I don't have time right now. So <laughs> when I do have time, I will. you will be going into Zoho, and I will be contacting you. So It's interesting, too, on the sequences. One thing that I learned like from doing the blogging course was when I first wrote the blogging course, it was, I mean, my whole email sequence is like eight, eight to 9,000 words, I think. Yeah. And I was like, oh, these emails are too long. Like, this is – but nope. Uh, people are – if you're giving them information and they want it, they'll, you know mm – -hmm. uh, I mean, maybe space it out a little bit more, and that's why I did it three week. But it, right. it's really interesting. Like writing the emails is uh, it. Se it almost seems like not a very important thing to do, but it really is a very very important thing to do. Mm -hmm. So I'm finding that for the stuff that I'm doing, that like 150 to 300 words is a pretty good sweet spot. But if I was doing, I think what you're doing is fine. Like because it's like real heavy duty informational stuff. The right. stuff that I'm doing is almost more like an anecdote. Or you know, like a story and then a pitch type of type of stuff. Yeah. Well, the other thing is, is that you want each entry to be relatively focused, mm -hmm. and if you're just you know giving them enough information to take action, then 150 to 300 words that makes sense. But if you're giving them a lesson, then a longer email makes sense, and you're still staying focused because it's the lesson on the thing. Right. Right. But yeah, I'm 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 definitely really happy with Drip with the uh, it's, uh, I, it's it's exceeding my expectations on on what you know on how effective these courses are. So see, I want to set up more courses now. I just don't have time. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So one other thing, and I I think I know the answer to this, but I'm being respectful, um, and that is is that I am seriously considering doing my own email course on podcasting, and I know that Derek has one. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm sure I won't hurt your feelings, but I want to make sure I won't hurt your feelings. 
<laughs> the the easiest way to not hurt my feelings is to plug signally. <laughs> yeah, I was planning on it. Uh, no, I was planning on it. The 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 one that I have, I think, is is good. I think it's great. That I, I I'm really happy with it. I'm getting quite a bit of traffic on it. Um, I actually just got an uh, email while we were sitting here from a guy who got the cheat sheet and uh, and wants more information, so I'm um, going to talk with him about SignalLeaf a little bit more. It's it's working for me slowly, um, but I certainly think there's plenty of room out there for more than one email course on this stuff. Frankly, <laughs> I think... I think yours will be more popular because you've got a much larger audience to work with, but that was not mm-hmm. the point of, of building mine. The point of building mine was to, to offer information to help guide people down the path and eventually, hopefully, get them to subscribe to Signal Leaf, but to, to educate people and to, to help people start podcasting. So the more people there are podcasting, the better. One one thing you guys could both do actually, Chuck, is when you if you when you write this thing up later on, Derek could write a complimentary sequence, and you could offer it, right? right. So oh yeah, it could be like it could be like something more hosting specific. Right, right, mm-hmm. right. So you just and like you know email ten or email twelve of the sequence is, hey, you know Derek wrote this thing that would be really helpful, and it's about how to make your hosting situation easier and better. Right, right. So there, yeah, there's. I'm not gonna offend me at all, man. I mean, yeah, I figured, you know, of, of all the people, funny about this stuff. So I mean, that I've had a number of people <clears throat> tell me that you and I should be collaborating on a lot more of this stuff. And while I don't disagree with that, I also don't have a whole lot of time to put into Signal Leaf. It's it. This is very slow and deliberately slow for me. It's yeah. it's not something that. I can afford to put a lot of time into, and you have goals that are much faster and much more immediate than what I would be able to to contribute to. Yeah, well, and I'm the type of person where it's like, okay, I'm going to do this, and so I just go and I just start executing. Yeah. And so, <laughs> right. um, you know, I've had to hold back so that I can buy my freedom. We've talked mm-hmm. about that. But as soon as, soon as I bust this thing open, yeah, I'm going to be going 10 million miles an hour. And I will not be able to keep up. <laughs> I mean, if if yeah. you want input, if you want me to write something on hosting, if I mean, I'm certainly oh, that would gonna, be awesome. I'm certainly going to help you out in any way that I can. But I'm. Yeah. It's funny because like um I actually this has been this has been hard for me like I the way you guys just responded does not. In theory, it's how I would respond, but it actually, in actuality, I a lot of times can get kind of petty and ter- territorial. <laughs> like when I was yeah. when I was doing. I'm not saying I'm not going to go crawl into my desk and cry in 20 minutes. <laughs> 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 well, like when I first was doing Sublime, like I I remember finding a couple times. Yeah. People writing books and well, like okay, so there there's like multiple. I'll I'll just be honest here. So like Jeffrey Way has this awesome, awesome Tuts Plus. Um, yeah. Course that he did, and I hate that thing because <laughs> it's so popular. Like yeah. he 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 gets so much traction on that, and like it, even now it still gets tweeted a ton. So I I, I got I, I have the same reactions. I'll 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 tell you straight up. <laughs> oh. There's there's um U- Udemy Udemy however yeah. you pronounce it. Yeah. Um, and I think it was Rob Walling had suggested that I put my mongoose course up there. Well, guess what email I got from an author. Yesterday, a a a a, a no JS ebook author. Yesterday, it was this nice, wonderful. Hey, my mongoose JS Udemy <laughs> Udemy course is on sale right now. Check right, it yeah. out. It's dirt cheap. Go get it. <laughs> That's and, the thing and, that drives me crazy about Udemy is that those courses are way cheaper than they should yeah, be. They yeah, they seriously yeah. are. It was like they're seven dollars for his course or something. They're doing the e- they're doing the Amazon model and they're kind of screwing. Yeah. People. It's funny though, you know. I, I, I wrote. I, a, I totally yeah. have the same reaction that you do, Josh. I mean, I'm, I got really. I, mm-hmm. I scrutinized his course outline like you <laughs> believe, trying yeah. to figure out if he had copied my material. Or, yeah. Like, Screw uh-huh. you, man. I was gonna do that. Well, <laughs> and, and like, every gotta, time you get, like, I I have this blog post I need to write some point. It's yeah. and it's called 
how I got over myself and made nine thousand dollars because like right. I kind of yeah. had that reaction when I saw that Wes was doing his book. You know, I was like, right. oh my gosh, you know, like I, he's gonna take it away from me. And no, it's like once you if you can get over that and yeah. actually partner, then you know it's two plus yeah. two equals five, and we both mm -hmm. made out great with it. Yeah, and it's even beyond that. I mean. I have literally never once written a ri an original blog post in my in my entire 10 years of writing blog posts. Not once, but I have some incredibly popular blog posts because people found me and instead of the other 500 people right. that have that have written about the same subject. You know, I'm most of the blog posts that I write are me researching a problem that I'm having, finding someone else's blog posts internalizing the information and then regurgitating it as my own information because now I know this stuff and I want to share. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's it's there's so much room out there. There's I mean all all three of you guys could produce a a, a podcast, you know, email course and cheat sheet in the next week and there would still be plenty of room for me and my stuff. Yeah. I'd be upset and and go cry <laughs> and stuff like that, but I'd I'd get over it in in an hour. Yeah. Well, the the other thing is is that I feel like the people who are finding you or finding Signal Leaf or whatever, right. I mean, sure, some of those people are going to have crossover with my yeah, reach, completely, but uh, but a lot of them won't. Right. And a lot of the people that I'm going to reach are people who would never find Signal Leaf without me. Right. And yeah. so you know I. Yeah, so yeah, so there's definitely some okay, do I do Derek's course or Chuck's course? But the vast majority of the people in either course aren't going to be those crossover right. people. Yeah. Right. And and they're going to connect in different ways. I mean, it's yep. like yep. um some I mean just from this show, right? We see it. There's certain people that listen to this show that email me, certain people that email mm -hmm. Josh, some certain people that email Chuck or 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 Derek. You know, there's certain, you know, we're, mm -hmm. we're a lot of the things that we say are the same, it's the same show, but um, it's it's interesting. There's just going to be that affinity. So there's mm -hmm. and and, it, and th there's so much room to like it, it's it's some things are zero sum games, right? Like right. Um, right. Uh, you know, like there can only be one number one best selling book on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> that one is a zero oh, I sum that book. game. <laughs> I bought that book that this book? week. <laughs> no. Oh yeah, no, no I, yeah. I did. Buy, I'm actually trying to contact her and, and actually do a partnership with her. Um, nice. and, yeah. and then yeah, I'm, I'm also going to SEO my blog post to to uh, still traffic. But to I'm going <laughs> <I'm gonna> point, <laughs> to I'm going to point people to our book too. So I'm I'm doing a kind of a partnership she doesn't even know about. But um, but but anyway, it's it, there. There's a lot of room, and there's a huge. It's a big. It's a big uh, market. And and the other cool thing that I that I that you know that I think is that. People who are enthusiasts about a thing, they can't get enough of the mm -hmm. thing. So right. it's uh -huh. like you know, like people buy all the stuff they can find on Sublime Text when mm -hmm. they're you know, super stoked about it, and you know, so it's it's yep. definitely you know, there, it, there's a lot more room in most markets than than most people people right. think. Yep. So absolutely, yeah. But the the main thing for me was that I didn't want to go into this and do it and then figure out that I was losing a friend over it. Yeah, and so you know, if if that was the case, then it was okay. Well, can we find something that works for everybody that we're all happy with? If and so, if if something like that would lose a friend, that's not much of a I. I agree, but I have had it happen to me before. Yeah, and so you know, I I figure I'll be respectful. I'll ask, and then he can tell me yes, yeah. and then we'll still be friends. I, I had a mentor years ago, that had had a, a very abrasive personality and I knew he did but the things that I learned from him were phenomenal and great and I very rapidly improved myself as a developer through him and that relationship ended when I decided to do something that I felt was appropriate and he did not appreciate what I did because it very directly affected his ability to rant and rave about a particular situation on my blog post. Uh -huh. And I, I realized after, you know, after a few weeks of seriously being torn up about him saying that he never wanted anything to do with me again and he was sorry he wasted time on me, I, 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 you know, it took me several weeks to get, to get over that, but at the end of that, I'm, I'm looking back at the situation going, wow, 
I should have gotten out of that a long time ago. You know, I shouldn't have shouldn't have put the level of trust and effort into this person to begin with because it's very obvious now that the direction he was pushing me and the things that I was doing were not not okay. The the kind of the kind of friendship that we had, the kind of relationship that that relationships that he creates are just not things that I want to be involved in. And so, you know, mm-hmm. that's that. I'm happy for the time that I spent under that person. I learned a lot from him and I'm glad that I'm not involved with him anymore because <laughs> he was not a good person for me to be involved with. Yep. yep. Same kind of deal here. I mean, if you if if you're gonna lose a friendship over over something like duplicating the material they produced when it's free material to begin with, it's you know. <laughs> yeah. So you heard but, me. You know, I mean, paste away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> I mean, it, it's it's but, funny. But, you know, I was ninety to ninety percent sure that I knew Derek well enough to just he was gonna be like, "Why are you right. even asking me this?" Right. But I, you just never know, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. It's funny though. I actually like for the bonus chapter of my book, I wrote about dealing with critics, and and I kind of touched on it. It's a very similar thing, but it's kind of even at one more level. It's like we, everyone instinctively doesn't want to see every other people succeed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like you, you always assume it's a zero sum game, but it, it yeah. so very rarely is. Even your friends, you know, what I mean, it's like <laughs> it's like even when it's not competition is unrelated. It's in right. some way like you yeah. have to fight that urge. Like it's a natural. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I brought it up because it's such a natural instinct. Like everyone feels bad right. about it because they're like, "Oh, I shouldn't be upset that so and so got a new job and a raise or whatever, or sold a bunch of whatever." But but you feel it because it makes you feel a little bit inadequate. It makes you feel not quite as good, and mm-hmm. it and it's it's important to overcome it because it's like mm-hmm. it's so built into us to because you should celebrate other people's success because there is so much. There's like there's if there's the pie is big enough for everyone. And uh, but but we tend to get into that, and then it kind of sucks because that's what really, you know, destroys the friendships, and it it, it creates yeah. this animosity when you could be pairing up with people, you could right. be you know uh, mm-hmm. you know doing partnerships, but a lot of people end up in that mode, like stuck there, yeah. where they're like every time someone does anything that that elevates them, they they hate it, and then yep. and that, they're isolated. But there's that analogy then in yeah. the art of war. Uh, I think this is a real thing too. Like so, if you put a bunch of crabs in a bucket. If yeah. one of the crabs starts to climb on top and starts to pull, his, you know, grabs the rim and starts to pull him, pull his way out, the other crabs will reach up and grab him and pull him back down. <laughs> the highest uh-huh. treason a crab can commit is to make a leap for the rim of the bucket. Yep. Yep. I I believe I <laughs> I believe I put that in soft skills. I quote that all the time. It yep. is, in fact, it, that's in the bonus chapter. In fact, that that that. In fact, wait a minute. Hold on, I think you you brought up exactly what is the uh, the opening line of the book <laughs> chapter, right? Yeah, um, and I've seen that like especially like so Western Pennsylvania where I live is kind of economically depressed in places, and so it's pretty interesting to see you know people who have like you know their blue collar backgrounds and their kids go to college and they actually do well for themselves, and you'd think that the families are always trying to pull them back in. And it's yep. just, you know, it's like, oh, you, you, you moved away, you know, <laughs> it's like, mm-hmm. like, oh my gosh, you know. Yeah, actually, I'll, I'll read you the beginning because I, I actually started off with exactly what you said. I said, um, I had a quote from Albert Hubbard: "To avoid criticism, do nothing, say nothing, and be nothing." And then I said, people don't particularly like to see other people try to make a better life for themselves, to try improve, to improve. It makes them feel threatened. It makes them feel a, like they should be doing something better with their own lives. As Stephen Pressfield put it in The War of Art, the highest treason a crab can commit is to make a leap for the for the rim of the bucket. If you decide to make a leap for the bucket, uh, you'll undoubtedly be met with criticism. But it's yeah it's 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 such a that thing stuck with me so much from that book because it's it's such a because it happens in your family like you know your one of the things that like your coworkers w- when you try to become an entrepreneur or try to do something successful they're going to like they're going to want to hold you back your family will like you know your family will not like what you're doing that you're bettering yourself they're going to make fun of you they're going to think it's like it's it's a hard path because you, if you decide to make a leap for the bucket like all of a sudden you'll have all these enemies Mm-hmm. Yep. 
We should probably leap out of this bucket. Yeah, yes. we should. <laughs> <laughs> Reaching for that rim. All right, guys. Same same bat time, same bat channel. Yeah. All Thanks right. a lot for your input, though, guys. And thanks for asking the questions for the things that you struggle with because those are the things uh, in a lot of cases that I don't think about. And then I'm like, yeah, I really have a problem there, too. So. <laughs> awesome. All right, guys. See you guys next, next week. week. Right. Yep. See you guys. Want to start a business, but you just know how to code. Listen to the young programmers, and we'll teach you straight up to be developing yours.